Okay, so um, what we'll do today is really to, uh, like we said, um, we'll, we'll start looking at the 3D pictures, right? The 3D flow, um, uh, how that is different from the axisymmetric flow and so on and so forth. So, what we'll start out doing is try and understand the uh, shape of the cone, right? Um, that and then how uh, the flow becomes different if this cone is not axisymmetric and has, uh, you know, uh, the axis of that cone has a certain inclination with the uh, free strip, which is basically the angle of attack, right? So what we'll start out doing is um, look at, look at the, uh, look at the cone. Okay. So what I try to do here is uh, draw this cone, right? Mm, I draw this cone using um, a sign lab, okay, so that we can, you know, move it around and uh, in space and see how it looks from various angles, so that we will um, try to, you know, have a clear picture, try to visualize the flow, okay. Um, so I mean that's the best we can do, I guess, you know, in a, in a class like this, uh, to in order to visualize a 3D flow. Okay, so all right. Um, so if I'm looking at this here, okay. So I've, uh, you know, let me go ahead and uh, you know do this plot, and we'll see what I'm talking about. So say I plot this, okay. So I get these two uh, pictures here. So let's you now this is essentially the cone, right? This is a cone which I have uh, plotted here. Now what I'm going to do is so you know depends on the way you look at it. So now, say I'm going to rotate this piece and see what we see. So if you look at just the base, okay, if you just look at the base, it is, you know, uh, just a uh, you know, circle. If you look at the base, it's just a mm, uh, circle, right? Again, if you say turn this down, this is actually a cone, okay, this is a 3D cone, okay. So let us look at look at this from uh, say the top. Okay, so if I want to look at this say from the top, what do you think we will see? Well, um, you should sort of guess by now, right? What do we see here? So it's again you know uh, just a circle. However, from now if if you uh, look at this, you know. This is the apex of it, or the vertex of it, or the topmost portion of it, right? And uh, what you see is essentially a circle. So, if you look at it from the top, or if you were to look at it from uh, uh, the bottom, okay? So, this is the basically the surface, okay? This is what we are looking at, okay? So, now you can. So this is more of a 3D picture now you can see, right? Now uh, let us sort of uh, you know turn this around a little more and see what sort of this uh, looks like. Okay. Now, okay. Now this is something. This is like a wedge. Okay. So you take basically a slice. Okay. So in one of these, uh, you know, as I'm moving around the cone. Okay. In one of these. Um, uh, views, I see something like this. It's exactly like a 2D wedge that you know we have seen so far. So it is something like this. So in the sense, what uh, what you should slowly try to visualize that in certain cases, okay, when we have a flow, right, it is seeing something like this, okay, something like a wedge exactly like this, which is planar, which is 2D, uh, right, and in other cases, okay. It is actually seeing a total surface, a body, you know, call it however you want. Okay, so we have a surface of rotation, and this is a surface, right? And this is what it looks like. So these are you can see that it is totally two different, uh, you know, physical bodies. These are two totally different physical bodies, and these lines here kind of um, also indicate that basically. Um, uh, uh, right, so it's it's a it's a surface of uh, rotation. So one of the ways you can look at a cone, right, 
one of the ways you can look at a cone for example say um, right so i'm just going to use this in a very crude way so i say this is the axis okay this is the vertical axis which is the axis which is uh, say you know right down the uh, from the vertex if you drop it perpendicular Okay, so say that this is that vertex, right? So then you take a radial line like that, and you you take a radial line from the vertex, and you move that around. Okay, you move that around, you move that around, move that around, and that forms your cone. So this is your surface of the uh, cone. So you have a cone or conical structure like this. Okay, which as you can see, although in one of the views that we saw, right that this did look like you know just a triangle just a triangle for example like this this looks just like a uh, triangle but it's only one of the views okay so um, so this is more like it okay now so now the point is that if i have such a cone okay if i have such a cone and in here i have a free stream which is coming uh, you know, which is uh, encountering this cone, right? And the free stream direction, you know, let us start with say the axisymmetric uh, case which we have done so far. So, we have a free stream which comes here, okay, and that is in line with this, um, uh, with the axis of this, uh, you know, uh, right, right circular cone. Um, so, if you then what will happen? So, in this particular case, okay, when you have a surface like this, okay, and you have a, a free stream coming in, then obviously there is going to be a shock wave. So, the shock wave okay, is also going to be centered around this vertex, right? but the shock wave is also not going to be the two straight lines which we were sort of drawing so far, you know, which were like the two edges of the, uh, you know, which were like the two sort of edges okay of the um, of the wedge so to speak but here we actually have a surface so what will happen so if for the shock wave also we will actually have a surface okay we will actually have a surface which is a conical surface centered around this vertex so let us see how that would say look like say this is this is more like it. So, what you see over here is that this structure here, okay, this is the physical cone, okay. This is the physical cone, this here, um, and we have a free stream coming in from here, you know, in line with the, uh, you know, in line with the axis of the, uh, of the cone here and the other the one on the top that one on this side this one that you see here this is the shock structure okay this is the shock which is encountered so uh, now let me move this around too okay let me move this around too okay now before i do this okay now before i do this let me uh, plot this one more time you must be wondering what this is let that let us just uh, take a while and not sort of i've done this in uh, i've done this in um scilab so i can you know plot it and do it as i want so let's just look at this now so we'll we'll come back and see what that what the other one meant okay so here basically we have the uh, shock structure right uh, sorry this is the this is the actual physical cone so what you have here is this physical cone okay now again i'm going to move this around and you can see it for yourself okay now this is what we have been used to so far isn't it so we uh, we would have say uh, a, a you know a, a conical um, you know a wedge like that then we would draw one line here and one line uh, here and that would be a shock okay in this case however if you if you look at this okay now our body itself now it appears right now you can see this now you can see this there you go there you go right so what you see now is that this this green thing that you see out here this is the cone this is the physical cone right this is the physical cone and the red one out here is the shock structure okay so clearly you, this is you know this this is the radial line emanating from this vertex 
Okay. So, this could be you can you can say this is the uh, limiting radi radial line, right. So, this will give us the uh, shock wave angle, is not it? The maximum shock wave angle with respect to the axis okay, of the um, cone which will go which, which, is, which is a straight line from the vertex up to this base here. Okay. So, this is the uh, shock uh, structure here. So, what you can see, what you can see basically, if now the major thing is that we you know move this around and understand how this you know shock structure looks from you know various angles. That is why you know I am trying to do this here, uh, okay, because uh, when we do the equations and stuff, we will be encountering theta and phi and you know z and we we'll, uh, you know we need to be very sure and understand very clearly what all of those mean okay that is why i'm doing all this exercise okay so if you so again so what you see in this case okay is that now you have a, a free stream here okay free stream which is coming uh, you know encountering this um, vertex now you have a streamline here so now what you will see here that when it enters okay when it enters this region okay when it enters this region so it is entering a surface of shock okay it's it's in entering a surface of shock unlike what we have seen before where we would have just you know one line you know and uh, it would the streamline would deflect across it but here um, if you were to draw several um, uh, radial lines, you know, emanating from the vertex. Okay, so uh, between the surface, okay, one uh, M line would basically go on the surface of this uh, cone. The other on the uh, outer surface of this uh, shock. So between these two radial lines, you know, you actually have a shock surface. Okay, these are not just two lines. You actually have a full uh, you know uh, you actually have a full surface you know like that okay so now um, now the point is now when we are you know looking at this when we are looking at this from various angles so um, now we will try to understand the sort of geometry over here okay so now um, if you sort of look at this so if you look at this, so these are essentially concentric circles. If you if you look at this, okay, the base of the cone is a concentric circle, is a circle, and uh, the shock wave. I sort of you know cut it to half so that we can understand, so that we can we can see. So I mean, it will probably ex ex uh, extend it a bit longer than I have drawn it here. Okay, so this is also a uh, shock wave. So what the way we will look at, okay. So, uh, the way we will uh, study or look at the shock properties or changes in the flow properties is uh, basically we will take a you know uh, sections along this along this um, uh, length of the uh, you know the shock th this cone. Okay. So, if I do that, so let me go here and do this. Okay. So, if I were to do this, let me call this as say this. So, let me just uh, say okay, fine. So, essentially what um, you know I am doing here is for example, um, hmm. interesting. So, probably I Uh oh, sorry. Okay, 
let us do this here. I think we will get this now. Um, okay, let us see. So, am I getting something here? What happened? Let me see. Okay. Okay. So, let me sort of go and look at this. So, what I am basically looking at is just, so now let us go and uh, sort of uh, look at this. Okay. So, I'm, what I am going to do here, okay, basically I am going to run that, you know, the other surface that uh, I was doing. So, I change that. Okay. Do this. Run this. Okay. So, what you see over here is this little ring. Okay. That ring is here. So, what we will see here is that, you know, you can see the small ring right there. Okay. So, when we, when we are going to study a, you know, structure like this, you know, we are going to sort of look at these rings. Okay. Look at the geometry of the ring and, uh, you know, in, in this case, and you can see that if this ring is actually going to have, you know, uh, sort of the middle po portion scooped out. You know, and that middle portion is going to be scooped out when you know depends on uh, where you are located along this uh, structure over here. So in this case, when you when you see this, okay, so there is it this ring, okay, this ring. So you can just think of you know a structure like this, okay. The green portion is a solid cone, is a solid surface cone, and this is a shock structure. This is a shock structure, which and both of these have the same. The vertex. So now, uh, what we do is we'll just take this ring, okay, and pass it through this, okay. So which means that let me go and pass that ring, okay. Let me go and say uh, pass that ring. See, so I sort of extend that. So I move that ring further down, okay because I am going to study this part. So, I move that ring further down. So, if you look at this, so I got that uh, ring out here. So, if I were to look at this, then I would look at the, um, uh, I am in a location like this. Okay? So, similarly, so if I were to sort of uh, look at, you know, trying to figure out how this geometry would look like. Okay? For example, I move it further down. Okay? If I move it further down, Okay, so there you see. So I'm basically passing the ring. I'm uh, passing the ring through this uh, conical, uh, you know, structure. Okay, so we have one solid cone and we have a conical shock. Okay, out here. Okay, so if that is the case, now let us look at say. Um, Okay. So, now, if I look at this, so I have, I am basically looking at a shock, um, looking at a, uh, you know, uh, at a location which is somewhere over here, okay, somewhere over here. So, if I were to look at, you know, a, you know a, in say a position like this, if you look at this, all we are seeing is basically one straight line here, another straight line here, a straight line here and these two wedges. Okay. Now, this is not any different from whatever we have done so far in terms of uh, oblique shocks and so on and so forth. Okay. We have been drawing these pictures over and over again on the board and your, you know, uh, you know in, in the plane of your notebooks and so on and so forth. Now, this is something that, you know, this is something that it is actually about. So, if you look at this, Okay, if you look at this, let us sort of turn this around, move this around and look at this from various angles. Okay. So, what I am looking at here is basically this, uh, this uh, you know, I, I, if you look at these three out here. So, there is a red circle, there is a blue circle, there is a green circle. So, we, we essentially have, you know, three parallel circles, right. We have three parallel uh, circles. So, I can also sort of uh, think of, you know, think of this, you know, if you look at this, this way.
okay, let us look, look at it here. So, if you look at this, we basically have three parallel circles. We have green, this blue and this, uh, this red. You can also think of this blue as a section you know as a if I sort of slice if it is almost like I am slicing this whole uh, thing. Okay? So, the shock structure will obviously will, will be you know will extend I have cut the short here in order to make this a little more uh, visible. So, so if I were to take this blue you know and you know here and slice it and move it in here then that is what I would do and then look at the properties. So, you can see therefore, that um, uh, even within the shock structure, okay, even within this red, uh, you know, cone out here, which is the shock, okay, the shock. So basically, this is also this also this cone also consists of several parallel, uh, you know, uh, planes like this, okay. So so I have various parallel planes out here, uh, which is making up the shock cone, okay, shock this conical shock structure here. Now. If I were to look at all of this, okay, from the base, okay, how would this look like? Make sense, right? This is how it would look like, right? So it's nothing but it's nothing but um, three concentric circles. So if I have to just uh, look at this here, it is nothing but three concentric circles. So, what you are actually seeing here is this green. So, this is how this is when you look at this shock structure uh, through the base. Okay? You are looking at it from the base. So, if you look at this, okay, so we have this green part which is the solid uh, uh, cone. Okay? This is a solid cone right? uh, and this blue, uh, red part is the shock structure. Right. The red part is the shock uh, structure and this blue is a slice which I have taken anywhere in between the shock structure uh, in anywhere between you know this uh, whole thing. It does not necessarily have to be you know, uh, you know in a non shock zone the way it is now you know. So, this is what it looks like if you were to look at it uh, this way. So, let us just sort of turn this around and see how it would uh, you know look like from the other side. Okay. So, it helps kind of moving this around and looking at it and trying to understand. Okay. So, this so if you look at this if you look at this uh, angle over here. So, if you see this okay. So, this is a uh, just think of now that now just think about this. Okay. Now, this is a solid uh, cone here this is a solid cone okay. and uh, this is the uh, this is the shock structure. So, if you have a free stream which comes in here, okay. So, you can see when the free stream will come in it you know a free stream a free stream will come here and encounters a shock you know it is on a surface you can look at this. Okay, it, it encounters a shock like that. So, it encounters a shock like that. There are no just single straight lines like we have been doing so far. So, you it, it will encounter a shock in this way in a, in a sort of it will move around in a, in a circle and uh, encounter this right and therefore and then there will be deflections you know in, in those streamlines. So, in that case if I take a slice like that and pass it through this then I should be hoping to see some uh, property changes in that slice and then if I put several slices together okay, and I then I and I put all this information together I might have something to. Um, I might have enough information about this whole uh, structure. So, if you look at this here, so if you look at this here, okay, now it just looks like that. Obviously, if you are looking at it from the vertex side, okay, if you are looking at it from the uh, vertex side, okay. So, again, just try to take a look at this, it is almost like a hat, is not it? This top is it almost like the cone is wearing a hat, if you look at this. Okay. So, uh, just I am going to turn this around and you know give you a little bit of view. So, if you look at this, so right, so on one view could be see this straight line and then you move this around and then you see this. Okay. So, you can you can think of this as a hat actually, the shock as a as a hat. Okay. And um, so when we have a free stream, you know it is going to in 
uh, it, it is going to uh, sort of encounter this in entire shock structure, okay, and uh, how this is going to behave. So, that is basically our uh, job uh, today, okay. So, let us again uh, go and sort of try and uh, decipher this uh, um, geometry part if even uh, a little more, okay. So, let us look at some look, look at this with a little more detail. Okay. So, this is what we looked at just now, you know, one of the pictures how we uh, looked at it right now. So, let us have you know this x and y. Now, this x and y, okay, so uh, axis is, is just in the plane, okay. You can, you can think of this it is just in the plane of the uh, you know this is the base plane, then this is the plane of the uh, shock okay? and this is the slice that we were taking. Okay? So, this is another sort of ring. So, this is this x y is in just is in that plane and the z axis is actually a line if you drop from the vertex uh, to the base. Okay? So, if this is true now let, what I am going to do here is uh, draw these three sort of uh, you know radial lines like that. So, these are right now these are three diameters. You can think of three diameters. Obviously, you can see that all these three um, sections that I am taking. Okay, the base here is of a different diameter than the slice blue and the shock uh, base red. Okay. So, these have three different diameters. So, I am basically taking uh, three uh, diameter you know vectors in that uh, diameter on these three uh, you know uh, slices so to speak okay now let me um, rotate this okay let me rotate this okay so what we uh, what we are basically sort of you know uh, doing here, okay. So if you think of this, okay, uh, if if you sort of think of this, okay, as the base of the cone, right? If say that this is the uh, base of the cone, right? So then all we are doing is we have an axis system which is x and y. This is an x and y. This is my axis system, right? And then I all I do this is my axis system okay and all I do here is or you know just think of the edges so this as say x and this is y okay this is the base you can think of this as the base of the cone and then you take this this uh, diameter axis and move it in this plane okay move it in this plane so what you just uh, saw now okay what you just saw now Okay, is rotation in these planes. Okay. So what you can see basically from here is that if you give okay okay if you are rotating it by the same angle okay if if you are rotating it in this plane in the in this conical shock structure out here you can take any plane you can take any plane along the z axis okay and uh, rotate it by any angle. It will be the same on any plane. You can you if you have an angle of say 30 degrees and you are rotating this diameter say in at the base of the cone, it is the same as if you take another plane somewhere here say in the blue, it will also have you are basically again rotating it at uh, you know the diameter here by 30 degrees and or here by 30 degrees. It is the same thing because these are basically parallel planes. Now, if I were to look at, so now this angle is essentially theta. Okay. So, this uh, angle is theta and it is the angle which we are making in the plane, okay, in the parallel planes which are making up the cone uh, shock structure or you know in the base of the cone, whichever way you want to look at it okay as long as you sort of you know have a feel for this it's fine so theta is basically the angle that we are making in the plane okay now let us look at this so what would this look like if i were to just look at this from the base 
okay, from the from the base side. Okay. So, if I am looking at it, so if you remember just now as I showed you, so I have this structure here. Okay. So, um, so, what you can see is if I draw an axis system is pretty much the same. Okay. It is the same for all the three planes that we are looking at. Although here, this is a solid cone, the green one, the red is the shock structure right? and this is a slice somewhere in between. Right, but if I take, but these are all concentric circles, and these are all centered around the same point. Okay, so therefore, if I take a, a radial line here and move it, okay, and I move it, so it is going to make the same angle on all these three planes, if you know what I mean. So theta is essentially giving you just the location in the, you can think of in the x y axis. Okay, so doesn't necessarily give you uh, you know, tell you whether this is a cone or not. So, obviously, we need more information to make this more into a cone. So, what more information do we need? So, that we can say this is a conical structure. Okay. When I look at it, I know it is a cone, sure, but when I am going to do the mathematics, okay, how am I going to look at a point? What are the things, what are the parameters that we are going to need to locate a cone? Okay. That is the exercise here. So, if I may go back one more time. Okay, so, what we are looking here is that uh, we have basically taken three parallel uh, surfaces. Okay, just for uh, one is the base of the uh, solid cone, another is the base of the shock structure, and just to slice somewhere in between. Okay, and, and I draw an axis system when I look at it, you know, in, in, in this 3D sense. Okay, so, axis system, so these are all concentric uh, circles, okay, these are all parallel planes. So, then I draw these three diameter vectors and sort of move them uh, with the same uh, you know degree in all the three uh, planes. So, I see something like uh, this okay? and this angle what it makes in the uh, plane in the plane okay, is theta. Okay? And as if I if I look at this here which in, in, the, in, in the sort of uh, if I look through the base of the uh, solid cone here, I see a picture like this. In sort of, this is like a 2D space, okay. And then, so this is what it will look like. If I take a radial line, it's pretty much, you know, it's just the same radial line moving through all the three planes, okay. So theta basically gives me the location in the x-y plane. That's all it does, okay. So theta. Now. If I go here, okay. Now let us look at this uh, structure a little more carefully. Okay, so what I will do is, okay. So this is my x y uh, plane. Okay, so x y is essentially located in the plane of these, uh, you know, say green, blue, and uh, red. Okay, so if I do that, okay. So I take that radial line. So this is the theta. Okay, so the theta is essentially in the plane, isn't it? So theta is essentially in the plane of um, the uh, you know, body here, which is the shock and uh, cone. Okay. Now, so let us consider these three points. Okay. You see that? So, I took, I have taken a point here. You know. So, these are three different cones, if you can think about it. So, this is this point out here okay, is a point on the, uh, um, on the solid uh, cone. This point is on the uh, on the slice here, and this point is on the shock structure. So these are essentially three different points. Okay. Now what is different between them? What exactly is different between them? Now if you look here in the planes, in the planes here, theta is equal to pi, isn't it? It is 180 degrees. It's making 180 degrees with the x-axis here. This point. Okay. Now, on this uh, blue plane also, this is making, theta is also making pi. Okay. Again, this is uh, 180 degrees okay, in the blue blue plane. And if you look at this blue, uh, little, a little blue uh, point here, so this is also making pi in the red uh, surface. Right? So, but you can clearly see that these are three different points. Right? Three different points. So, what is it? How are we, how are we going to define the difference? Because if you look at theta, it's the same in all the three planes. Now, what we can do is look at the uh, view from uh, look into. Okay, 
through the uh, base of the cone. If I look at this, so this is uh, the you know this is the shock, this is the cone, and this is the this is the shock. So if I were to look in this two D space, where do you think the points would be located? If I you know where do you think the points would be located? If you look at this point here, it's at the right on the leftmost uh, you know on a point. So basically, this is how the points would be located, isn't it? So for all the three planes, if you look like if if you look at so all the three planes, if you look at this. It's at the leftmost end, so that's where we have this point. If you look at this, it has a leftmost point, which is here, and the red one again, it's on the left leftmost point, which is over here. Okay, so these are the three points we are looking at. Now, what we're going to do here, what I've, I've just done, is that I dropped a uh, a line. Okay, I dropped a line from the vertex. Okay, vertex, and uh, reach this point here. Okay, so uh, basically, if you uh, sort of you know uh, look at this. Okay, so this is a plane. Okay, so this is a plane. Okay, and I'm looking at say a point over here. Okay, so if you uh, look at this. Okay, so I have a plane. You know, this is the base of the cone. Say. I'm looking at a point over here, right over here. So this makes an angle uh, uh, pi, okay, with the positive x-axis. Okay. Now I actually have a cone. I actually have a cone sitting up here. I have a cone sitting up here. So what I am doing is, so I take from this vertex, okay, I drop a uh, radial line which touches this point to reach this point. So I drop a line from here. So that's what this um, arrow is here. Okay. So similarly, I will drop one more for this, for this point here, for the blue. Okay. That, and then again this. Okay. For this. So what is the difference exactly between these three? So essentially, what I am looking at, you know, this is essentially a cone structure, isn't it? So at the base, okay. So at the base, I have this point. Okay, uh, uh, right, and the cone then sort of, you know, fat, you know, uh, it comes up uh, like that. Then you have a blue, okay, a blue structure uh, there, okay, in here. And the way the shock structure here is that the, the the shock has a larger, the shock base has a larger diameter, and that. Sort of decreases. The shock, the cone has a smaller diameter compared to the shock. Okay, so therefore I have a point here. Okay, so uh, and the next point is somewhere over here. So for the first one, I drop a radial line from here like that, and for the next one, I drop a line like that. Okay, like that, and for the third one again, I drop a line from here, and it will probably reach there. Okay, so that is what I have done in this case. So if you want to think about it this way, so here, okay, so you can you can think of this, okay, for this particular point. So if I have this sort of vertical axis, okay, so for this particular point, uh, point, okay, so I have this angle. So if you look at this, you know, this radial line makes a certain angle with this vertical axis. Now, the next point is somewhere over here. So, then this has to move like that, is not it? This is the next point. We, you can think of this as the blue plane. Okay? So, this angle is what it is making with the vertical. Again, the, uh, the, for the shock, it is somewhere over here. So, I have to increase the angle. So, this is the, surf, this is the surface in which I am acting. So, when I am uh, drawing these radial lines, it is in this, uh, this place. Okay? And the angle which it has made with the in this particular plane is theta, which is in this plane. So if you do a clockwise or anticlockwise rotation here, and this rotation is in this plane, which is this plane is actually perpendicular to the plane in here. Okay. So uh, if I were to sort of look at this, okay, let us look at this from another angle. Okay. So I, you can you can see here now I've, you know this is my cone this is the cone base okay this is the shock structure up here and you have this you know cutting plane somewhere over here 
So, then these are my three points, is not it? We located these three points somewhere over here. Okay. And then, uh, if I drop a perpendicular from the uh, vertex okay, uh, to the base of the cone. Okay. So, in this plane, in, or in this plane actually, plane of these um, concentric mm, circles over here, this is the theta. Okay. And you can see the theta is equal to pi for all the three cases. Then, Okay. So, you have this like I just now I try to show you. So, this say, say I have this vertical. Okay. I have this vertical and then I lift it. Okay. Lift it so that it is it, it be this uh, radial line basically gives me this particular point. Okay. This radial line is being originating from the from the vertex. Similarly, let us try and look at this point here on the blue on the blue plane. Okay, so, you move that and it goes that way. So, again we take this and we move this. So, then again it goes. So, essentially we have okay, three radial lines okay, and this angle, this angle that it makes okay, is the angle phi. Okay. This angle is the uh, phi angle or the azimuth uh, ang angle. Okay. So, if um, now we located for example, so these three points right at the edges. Okay, so now, uh, okay, um, a sort of okay. Okay, so what we looked at. Okay, so now um, we looked at we we took three points exactly on the uh, you know dam left. Uh, you know at pi basically theta is equal to pi. Now, what if we do not do that? What if we take different um, points? So, now let us look at each uh, slide, each you know circle here or plane here. If you look at the green uh, place here, okay, this is not pi degrees, okay, it is less than pi, it is you know something less than pi, okay. So, it could be 150 degrees, for example, okay, and this one is pi. On the on the on the blue plane, it is still pi, right? It is still pi. And if you look at the red plane, okay, now this is more than pi, isn't it? If you look at just the red plane, it is more than pi. So it could it would probably be you know 180 degrees, you know plus 30 degrees or plus you know, 45 degrees probably not 45 maybe 35 degrees. Okay, so pi plus 35 degrees. Okay, so we have this. Now in this case, how will uh, this? Uh, if if I were to drop the vertex, you know, the radial lines from the vertex, well, how will they look like? Okay, so what this means is that I have this radial line. Okay, I have this radial line, and then I move it here. Okay, look here. Okay, and I do that. And I move it here. So that moves there. Then move here. Okay. So if I were to sort of what exactly am I doing here? Okay. So in the previous in the in the previous case we said we are looking at basic. So the, again this is the base of the uh, cone. Right. Again this is the base of the cone. And say so this is the point that we're looking at. Okay, this is the point we're looking at. So, so, at the f so there are three points. Okay, so then at the first instance, I I uh, have a mm, you know it, it is just a straight line. So you can this, the first instance is just a straight line along the body of the cone which reaches here. So that you can you can just take that as the surface of the cone. So that that comes up here. Okay, so you can you can also think of a, a radial line. Okay, which you drop. So radial line is here and you basically uh, point it to the uh, to this particular point. Now, the next radial line should look at or well, the next radial line should look at is the point which is higher up here. So, we went like this. So, this was our next point. Okay. This was our next point and the third one again it went up here. So, these are the three points that we located okay. and all the three points here were the left uh, or theta was pi. Okay. Now, theta is not pi. Okay. For the first one, what I am locating is a point somewhere over here. Okay. It, it is making less than pi. 
Okay, it is actually like making less than pi. So, if you look at it, the point is here actually, the point is here, is not it? So, in that case, in that case, so first if I drop a perpendicular, so in, in, the, in the previous case, I drew per, uh, the perpendicular, the, my radial line was here. Now, the radial line is going to shift by this theta. Okay. Again, previously when I had this radial line, okay, now, now for the next one, okay, which is for the blue one. So, if I have this, okay, previously what I had was like this. Okay. Now, it is going to remain at the same point, because it's still theta is pi. Okay. So, this is still going to remain at the uh, same point. And the third one, again, previously, again it, it was here in the same plane. Now, that is going to move, it is going to be here. So, hopefully you can see the difference. Okay. You hopefully, you can see the difference. So, that is the theta which, which is creating the difference. So, essentially, so I have this uh, vertical okay, which I am dropping from the vertex. Okay. So, I have say this is the point which I am located. So, point at this point at, at this particular location, it is in, in this plane is making pi degrees. Okay. What if it makes more than pi? So, then I am going to just track the particle, I am going to track the particle, I am going to go behind. So, say the particle is moving, so I track it, so I track it, I move this, okay? move this, now it is making 0 degrees, so then I move it, then I move it, then that forms my cone. Okay? That forms my cone and you can see it is still the same radial line, okay? it still makes the same angle with the uh, vertical, so to speak, it still makes the same angle with the vertical. Okay, still my same angle with the vertical, but because this point is now moving in this x y plane. Okay, so the theta is changing, so this also moves, but the phi remains same. Okay, the phi the the, the phi remains change, but because of the theta changing, this moves. So that is what essentially these radial lines are, uh, you know, mean over here. So if you again, if I if I sort of look at this, okay, so I'm looking at these three points. Okay. So, I this uh, goes up by radial line, okay, that and this and this again if I look you know through the if I again if I look sort of into the uh, cone uh, structure through it, okay, if I look at this then in this particular case, in this particular case what would you notice? Right. So, if now you can see that in this plane, okay, in this plane, these are three concentric circles, but if you look at just the green uh, circle here, which is the base of the cone, okay, it is making less than pi, is not it? It is making less than uh, pi, this is again at pi, the theta and the blue is more than pi. Okay. So, you can see it from here. Okay. So, um, uh, so essentially when now and of course, another difference is that this is also at a, uh, so besides just the height, okay, besides just the angles, okay, now we are uh, able to sort of locate this, okay, not only just in the plane, but also um, uh, not only just in, in, in this plane, okay, the x axis, but also in a uh, conical plane like this. But whether we have the base of the cone or we have the slice here, or we have the base of the shock structure is again going to be decided by the height z. Okay. So, that information is also necessary. So, I think uh, we will uh, stop here right now okay. and then when we take it up from here again what we will start doing is now go ahead and try and understand uh, the difference between the axisymmetric and symmetric case uh, of the shock structure. Okay, so, we will uh, stop here now and take it up from here. Okay, thank you.